Welcome back. Uh, having seen the API for controllers, we're now going to look into one implementation that we have uh, on top of IPOP, which is Social VPN. The idea of Social VPN is to create a virtual private network that's very easy to set up. Basically, all you need to do is configure a IPOP to talk to an online social network backend that, ex that supports XMPP and then you make friends. And if you and your friends are running IPOP, you get a VPN connection automatically without any effort, without deploying any infrastructure. And then on top of this, you can run existing software. You can play um, online games, you can stream um, media, you can share files, and that's all private without going through the online social network backend. So if you're sharing files, if you're sharing photos, you're not storing them on uh, the online social network you're actually storing on your own resources. So this you can think of as friend-to-friend, -friend, peer to peer links and part of what uh, the, the team can name comes from is this idea that you're actually connecting just between friends but now you're having your team cans uh, linking you to all your friends and you can communicate with them. Uh, so this is again open source software uh, that is um, a controller that uses the team can API as described in the previous lecture. So the key insight in social VPN is that every user independently decides who they want to connect with. So you are in control of your own friendship, so to speak. That in contrast with the group VPN, which we'll see in the next slide, uh, in the next lecture, where a administrator, a group owner, decides who joins the group. So social VPN is individual focused, group VPN is focused on a group owner who uh, the other users trust. Now one issue with social VPN that also differentiates from group VPN and from many VPNs that are out there is that IPv4 addresses are dynamically translated. The issue is to create a virtual private network you use private addresses and if you look at the amount of private addresses that are available out there, they're not sufficient in IPv4 to map every user of a large social network into them. For example, Facebook has billions of users and there are not billions of addresses available for uh, you to map into a private VPN. So the key insight in social VPN is that every user has their own view of their network. So there are millions and, and, and large numbers of uh, users in a social network, but a regular user only has a hundreds, perhaps, if they're very popular, thousands of connections. So you can map only your connections to a subnet, and that subnet can be um, relatively small. So 16 bits, for example, you can map 65,000 endpoints, so that's sufficient to map um, uh, in a, for a typical user their friendships. So the idea in social VPN is that every user maps to an address on your local subnet and then we dynamically address, uh, dynamically map uh, the address of a user, uh, uh, the identity of a user to the address that you assign it to in a local network. Group VPN, on the other hand, is intended to um, be an environment where people come together to form, uh, for example, a virtual private cluster to run applications and uh, dynamic address translation is not necessary and all devices are basically in the same virtual private subnet as a typical cluster normally works. So how does the social VPN controller work? Currently the social VPN controller establishes for every user that's online, every user that sends a XMPP presence message to the XMPP service, Social VPN will proactively create a tin can link with them. So when I log into the XMPP service, I'm going to send a message that reaches all my friends, and when they receive that message, they will all start creating a link to me. And that proactive link creation is good uh, because uh, it's expected I'm going to communicate with my friends, and at that point, I'll have already tin can links established with them. Uh, the controller takes a local IPv4 subnet from the configuration file, and the idea is that you're going to choose one that does not conflict with your local area network. And that's a private address space, for example, on the 10 dot range. And then SocialVPN will take every friend 
and map to one address within this range. By default, this address is generated dynamically, so SocialVPN picks an address for your friend and maps it, or you can also set these uh, statically through the configuration file. You can say Alice maps to 10.10.0.1 and Bob maps to 10.10.0.2. SocialVPN also supports IPv6, and the nice thing about IPv6 is we don't need to do translation because the address space is much bigger. So we derive a private IPv6 address from the device ID uh, that's, that's used to connect to the XMPP server. So for example, suppose we have Alice, Bob, and Carol, and let's say they are using an XMPP server that also provides stun. Uh, for example, this is a, a Jabber, um, eJabberD server that's running on, on uh, the internet. And let's say that Alice and Bob are friends, and uh, Bob and Carol are friends, but Alice and Carol are not friends. So how would the social VPN work in this example? So suppose that Alice is online and then Bob logs in. Bob is going to send a message to uh, his friends, uh, both Alice and Carol, through the XMPP server. We'll say, I'm online, I'm present. When Alice receives that presence message, it's going to send a request to connect to Bob. And we saw through the API examples in the, in the previous slide that that goes from Alice to Bob through the XMPP server, reaches the controller, eventually Bob sends a reply, and they create a P2P connection over um, the internet, and then they're able to start sending messages directly to each other through that tunnel. So the, the presence message triggers this whole process of creating a link. But now we have to bind IP addresses to this link. So suppose that Alice has her private IPv4 network with this uh, subnet, 172.31.0. So Alice has its own address, let's say, at uh, .0.100, and she maps Bob to be .0.101. So anytime Alice sends a packet to Bob, SocialVPN will translate that destination into, uh, we'll look up and determine that that's a link to this machine that Bob owns, and it's going to tunnel that traffic uh, this way. Now Bob has his own view of the social uh, VPN. Let's say that Bob uses the, exactly the same subnet. It could be a different subnet as well. So Bob locally has his address as .0.100 and also maps Alice and Carol to different addresses. In this case, let's say Alice gets 101, Carol 102. So when Bob needs to send a packet to Alice with this address, it's also going to choose this link uh, to send a message through. And when Bob sends a message to Carol on this address, Social VPN will map to this other link. This mapping, this translation is done automatically, so the user does not need to um, determine uh, this translation on their own. But it does mean that we have a sort of a net within Social VPN that translates all addresses uh, going from a user to another user. We do not translate ports, but we do translate addresses. So Bob is able to communicate with Alice and Carol, but Carol only communicates with Bob, Alice only communicates with Bob, and each user has their own view of their private IP before network. So this allows us to scale to very large uh, social networks as, as long as each user has enough of a local uh, private address space to map uh, each user that they want to connect with, or more precisely, each device of each user they want to connect with. Uh, Social VPN also supports IPv6. By default, the TAP interface gets configured both with an IP address and an IPv6 address, IPv4 and IPv6. And because the address space of IPv6 is much larger, we don't need to worry about translation. So here, Alice also gets an IPv6 address, Bob gets an IPv6 address, and these addresses are unique throughout the network. So if you're developing a new application, not reusing an existing application based on IPv4. If that application is based on IPv6, then social VPN works really nicely because there's not even that internal NAT anymore. Addresses are uniquely uh, bound to every user. So the same address that Bob, uh, Alice is using to communicate with Bob is the same address that Carol is using to communicate with Bob. So we hope that social VPN 
uh, applications that build on top of social VPN eventually will support more and more of IPv6 and the issue of address translation will be uh, less important for those.